former chairman of the Citizens for the Republic, I'm delighted to see this room filled with so many old and close friends. To all of you who are doing so much for our country, I thank you. You of Citizens for the Republic are here today because you've chosen to become actively involved in the political life of our nation. Well, I guess you wouldn't be surprised if I said that reminds me of a story. <laughs> is that with our economic program in place, especially our tax reform, more taxes have become a thing of the past and we can take pride in this because it testifies to a fundamental fact about our nation, the ability of the American people to make their own will prevail over that of the special interests and big government. But I'm afraid there's some bad news. You see, when it comes to more spending, we still have our work cut out for us. The fact is, the federal budget process just plain isn't working. Here in Washington, we must get Congress to reform the budget process itself, to stop all the delays and the missed deadlines. We can do this by getting Congress to vote yes or no, up or down, on an amendment to the Constitution that will put a stop to the flood of red ink. You know, there's a little story that comes to mind here. It seems that back in 1981, one congressman was out talking to one of his constituents, and he asked him how he stood on the tax cuts that the president wanted. Well, the congressman went on for some length about the great complexity of the issue and the enormous difficulties of public expenditures and revenues, and the old farmer he was talking to just kind of shifted around, and then he said, well, let me ask it this way. Are you for him or against him? <laughs> well, today a majority of states have already passed resolutions calling for a constitutional convention to propose a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution. If Congress goes on refusing to take this action, I won't hesitate to take the case for this constitutional amendment directly to the state legislatures. But my friends, isn't it about time that Congress did the right thing and finally enacted the balanced budget amendment? Forty, 44 states 
have this in their state constitutions. Now, beyond those constitutional reforms, there's the need for immediate political action. In short, we must get Congress to agree to a responsible budget deficit reduction package this year and to stay with it. You know, they, I've heard these cracks, they've been making some of them up on the Hill lately, that, well, I have never submitted a balanced budget. Well, of course I haven't. There's no way that anyone could pretend with the size of the deficit that we inherited and that goes on every year that you could cut that all at once in one year. That's why Graham Rudman Hollings was passed, to set a pattern of reducing it each year till finally you reached the balanced budget and then make that from then on permanent. We, I've already shown that when Congress passes budget-busting boondoggles, the kind that give me heart heartburn, I, well, let me put it like this. How do I spell relief? <laughs> V-E-T-O. Yes, we've, we've got our work cut out for us in the next 19 months. Turning from Washington to the country at large, we need to extend our support to state and local levels. One fact just about says it all. There are 88 congressional districts where in 1984, George Bush and I received more than 60% of the vote, but where the congressional seat is today still held by a Democrat. It's high time for us to start fighting back time for us to set priorities and concentrate on just how and where those congressional lines are drawn. Now, if Republicans have greater state house strength, then we can play a major role in ensuring a fair redistricting process. Now, that will take place again, as it does every 10 years in 1990. And they have been gerrymandering for over 50 years. They have been in charge of the redistricting. When they redistricted in 1970 and I was governor of California, I took one look at what they'd done and I said the only district they left to the Republicans was south of the border. <laughs> so we've only got a couple of years and it's going to be necessary if we're to get back. This thing out of 56 years, the last 56 years, the Democrats have had a majority in both houses of the Congress for 46 of those years, one house for six, the six that I had where I had a, the Senate, and now we've lost that again. And in 32 years in that period of Democratic presidents, all of them had Democratic Congresses except for one two-year period when Harry Truman had a Republican Congress. And for the 24 years of, of uh, Republican presidents, well, other than my six years with the one house, for 16 years of Republican presidents, they all had Democratic Congresses, majorities in both houses, except for one two-year period during Ike's term. And uh, we've got to change that. The people want it nationwide. The only person in, or people in Washington that are elected by all the people are the president and vice president then how come by districts we let them divide up the country so that they can send a Congress to keep the presidents from doing what the people wanted them to do? Yeah. 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 One thing is very clear every day, the number of Republicans in Congress makes an important difference. The only, well, I've told you about the only Republican president, but. Let's make a commitment tonight to get the word out and get the vote out. I'm sure you would agree that future presidents should not have to work with a Congress that doesn't represent the people. The issues are with us. The challenge is getting the word out. Now, our policies have given the American people economic growth, stable prices, and international peace. Our opponents offer rhetoric. I think we can claim we offer accomplishments. We worked hard for all our accomplishments in 1980 and 1984, and our great nation is now at a crossroads. The presidential elections of 1988 are going to be crucial to the future for our children and for their children. I'm going to do everything I can to help our nominee become the next president, and I hope, too, that you'll work as hard to help elect Republicans in the coming elections. And when it comes to that presidential election, 
Let's be reminded of something that back in the 60s served us so well. Let us remind all of our candidates to obey the 11th commandment and run against the Democrats, not against each other. You know, our political adversaries believe that the gains we've made these past six years were a fluke. And I just happen to believe they were the result of a great deal of hard work, perhaps uh, even more important, of vision. And that's what distinguishes Citizens for the Republic. You are one organization that understands both the need to dream great dreams and then the need to work hard at making them come true. So for all that you've done for our nation, even more, and for all that you're going to do, I thank you. And now I think that in view of my first story that I ought to give the Lord an even break. Uh, you heard about the fellow in the flood that was on the roof of his house and a boat came along to take him off and he said, oh no, I've placed my trust in the Lord. He'll take care of me. He stayed right there. Pretty soon the water kept on coming up and a motorboat came by and they tried to take him off and he got the same answer that he placed his face in the Lord. A helicopter came over and drowned. He wouldn't do that. And he was washed away and drowned. And he got to heaven and he was pretty upset. He said, I don't know what I'm doing here and why I'm dead. He said, I placed my faith in the Lord, and here I am. And a voice from above said, I sent two boats and a helicopter. <laughs> Well, now, if you don't mind, I'm going to quit this because I have a chance now, the only way to say, be able to greet each one of you individually, and, and you'll know that I'm saying thank you all the time to all of you for what you've done. So I'll go back there and take my place, and you're all going to come by, and we're going to, we're going to greet each other. <laughs>